Right, morning boys and girls, how are we all doing? It's um, it's the morning after the December Nottingham Pipe Club, you have to excuse me, I'm really not not feeling alive this morning, shall we say. But no, we had a, uh, a cracking night last night, it was the uh, Christmas December Pipe Club. Um, didn't quite have the turnout I've come to expect, but still not bad, there were 17 of us braving the cold last night. Um, Still got another two cold ones yet to come, guys. So uh, make sure you bring your thermals for the next one. Um, the next one won't be held until the second Monday in December, because in January, sorry, because of the bank holidays. So the next one's going to be on uh, what is it? January the seventh? Sorry, January the ninth. So just make sure that's right. Yeah, so the next one's going to be held on Monday the 9th of January. Um, it's at the Lincolnshire Poacher, which is on Mansfield Road. It's sort of like a couple of hundred yards just out of the city centre sort of thing. Um, if anybody wants any more information on the Nottingham Pipe Club, I always forget to mention this. You can check out the Nottingham Pipe Club website, which is www.nottinghamtobacco.co.uk. I'll stick a link in the bottom for you. Um, so yeah, it was a good night. We had the uh, Christmas raffle. Um, Bill, as many of you know him, Puffalo Bill won um, a goodie box full of all sorts. It was the uh, peak, what is it? The 2011 Peaks and Christmas Pipe Shape B10 Calabash. Uh, 100 grams of the uh, Peterson tobacco. This is an empty tin, but hey, what are you going to do? Uh, there was 50 grams of my Christmas spice. Sorry, everybody, it's now sold out. I've sold out in five days, it's a record. Um, a one off limited edition tin design by AD. Uh, there was also a tin of Tox Christmas Pudding, uh, which is a beautiful snuff that was, I'll talk about that in a moment, and also one of the Sherlock Holmes acrylic tampers. So, uh, big up to Bill, Buffalo Bill, for winning that. Um, I hope you enjoy the pipe and the tobaccos, and I know you enjoyed the snuff. Oh, it's beautiful, it smells like mulled wine, so much clove, it was unbelievable. Um, not really a Christmas pudding -y sort of smell, but a very, very festive scent to it, but it was gorgeous stuff. Um, so right, the important thing is the tobaccos we smoked last night. Uh, I'm going to go through them in the order that I smoked them in and also tell you what pipe I used and the usual, we should all know by now how I do these things. Um, so first I started off with uh, some tobacco that some friends pick, picked up for me while they were in Holland. Um, just quickly going to show you that. Uh, where's the salami gone? But anyway, um, I can't see it at the moment, but I do have a tin of Savani 663, which is kind of a Virginia Perique mixture. Um, they picked a 50 gram tin of that up for me. Good old classic tin of three nuns. Unfortunately, uh, the guys opened it, so I won't be able to age that, so I need to plow through it. Also, some Troost slices. Um, I didn't get around to trying these last night. Some of the people who like slight aromatics, Dutch tobaccos, got on with it. I know uh, Polish Chris wasn't too impressed with it. Started biting his tongue a little bit towards the end, but I'll be giving that a try in a couple of days. As well as that, many of you know I'm a big, big Dioli fan. fan. Um, they also got this from a small little pipe shop for me. The other tobaccos are from the Hyanus, Hygienius shop. I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry. Um, they got me a tin of this. It's hard to see, the label is faded on the top, but it's Dioli fan pipe tobacco. So I'm assuming this is pipe tobacco. Uh, inside, it's a lovely golden leaf. It's a little bit dry. Um, I used to go and humid up for a couple of days, soften it up. It smells gorgeous. The smell reminds me of the uh, the smell of the Jelly Fan factory when I was there earlier this year. Um, such a beautiful little box. Um, I won't mention where it came from because there's no health warnings on it. There's no uh, European duty stamp on it either. So uh, I don't think I should have been sold to be honest, but hey, we're not going to talk about that at the moment. So yeah, so um, I started last night on the Solani 663, which is kind of their Virginia Perique mixture. Um, I smoked it in my, my Comoys Red Bark. Um, I've now got my new stem. Uh, the guys at Comoys and Cadugan and Dr. Plum, GBD, didn't quite do what I requested. Um, I asked the original stem, which many of you saw was a fishing stem, came out to there, so it's a solid stem. I sent it back and asked for a short saddle. Now to me that isn't a short saddle bit. I would have liked it to have been to about here, but it actually it's alright. It's just the right distance for me. But I will prefer a thought a bit further like that. Go. 
<laughs> Deep throat in my pipe in the morning. Not a good thing to do. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, back to the tobacco. Um, the pre-light draw, lovely Virginia, fresh Virginia flavours, kind of grassy, earthy kind of notes. Subtle hints of figs and chocolate from the Perique, that's just on the pre-light. Um, once I got it going, an extremely cool and smooth tobacco. Lots of sweet Virginia tones. It's not enough, not enough of the Perique and the flavouring for me. Uh, those of you who tried my Bayou blend know what ratio of Perique should really be used at. Um, a lovely smoke, a lot sweeter than Dunhill Deluxe Navy Rolls, which a lot of us use as kind of the, the benchmark for comparing Virginia Perique mixtures. Um, very, very cigarette like. It's kind of a typical Virginia roll up. I mean, I smoke a lot of, um, in roll ups, I smoke a lot of gold, gold Virginia roll in tobacco. Not golden Virginia, by the way, gold Virginias. Um, just to make golden. Um, you could inhale it very easily, which might be why I'm a bit <coughs> this morning. Um, got a little bit bland in the second half, kind of lost its lovely, subtle, like, fresh nuances and things like that became rather hot and bitter towards the end, a lot sooner than what I expected. I still had quite a bit of tobacco in the bottom of the chamber when it had gone a bit bitter. Tamped her a few times, tried jigging her about a bit, but really I wasn't that impressed with it to be honest. Um, I was I think it's I went into it expecting a lot more than what the tobacco could provide for me. But it's still it's still a pleasant smoke, just not not spectacular, if you know what I mean. Um, then after that, I then moved on to some Ogden's Walnut. Now, I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to this. I suppose it's the problem of getting into pipe smoking, working in a specialist shop like I do. Um, I haven't tried many of many of the supermarket or drugstores, as our friends across the pond will call it, tobaccos. Um, I, I hear so many bad things about how these tobaccos have become ruined over the years that I tend to avoid them. So I. Um, we took some of the uh, what's it, Ogden's, now made by Imperial Tobacco's Walnut Flight with us. Smoked that in my trusty little morale bent ball. Um, I'm really good at saying this one. Oh, this pipe. Oh. Um, the pre-light, there was hints of citrus and some beautiful like medium to dark Virginia flavours. The first half was nutty and an extremely subtle bit of spice on the inhale. Um, a lovely, cool, and nutty finish. As you get, as you're smoking through the bowl, there's, it's kind of almost a, a Lakeland florally note, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. We, quite a few of us were trying to pin down that. There's a flavour in there. Saying it's floral isn't right, but it's got that kind of fresh, clean Lakeland style flavour, but it's not floral. Saying floral isn't right, but. It, I can't put my finger on it. I'm gonna have to keep smoking this, see if can pick, pick this flavour out. The second half, it's a lot less subtle. It's just a really very rich, earthy, nutty smoke. The spices are gone, but that, that again, like I say, that hard to detect, almost the Lakeland flavour is still there. That was an absolutely gorgeous smoke. Um, I mean, a good again, and a good friend of ours, Chris Polish Chris. He was suggesting that I try and incorporate that into some of my future blends and I may do. It's it's a it's a very good, very good sort of um I say medium medium strength Virginia. Got some lovely flavours to it. I see why they call it walnut. Um, it does have quite of a cool following in the shop. Many of these tobaccos do, I suspect. Our main walnut customers have been smoking it for decades to be honest. Um so that was me done with um, English non aromatic Virginia blends. Uh, up next, I hit some aromatics. Now, this time of year, well, in general nowadays, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of aromatics. Um, so we had we had the choice of two twists, cut, cut twists last night. It was the curly cut deluxe, and there was the um, that was sliced brown. Now, I've heard a lot about sliced brown. Um, I've smoked the the flavoured versions. I've had cinnamon and I've had rum. Um, they're strong, big, stout tobaccos. So instead of going for the sliced brown, I opted for the curly cut deluxe. I smoked this in my BC Origin. Um, quite a few people commenting how this, in theory, should be a lightsaber. <laughs> I see what they mean. But it's pipe. It pipe smokes beautifully. Although now I can definitely taste what I smoked in this last night. So yeah, the Curly Cut Deluxe, it's um, 
<coughs> it's kind of, it's got a lovely, um, I'll start by trying to explain the twist to you first. Uh, it's got a lovely golden fill, I'm guessing it's Virginia, maybe a little bit of Burley in there, a lovely golden core inside. And then the wrapper and binder, using cigar terminology here, around the outside is the dark Gowish Virginias. Um, it's then cased with kind of like a sweet Danish butter cookie style casing. Uh, it's like a milder version of the DVC, the Dark Virginia Cavendish, which is an extremely sweet tobacco. Um, my tasting notes ended by this point. I had a couple too many beers and I'd gone away from being critical on tobaccos to just having a smoke and having a laugh. Because at the end of the day, that's what Pipe Club's all about. It's not just about me being sat in a corner with a notepad taking notes all night. Um, an ex a very, very cool and sweet smoke. Uh, like I say, much lighter than the DVC and the flavourings. Um, with the DVC, which I used in my um, Pinning Down Cavendish reviews a couple of months ago, I think it's a couple of months ago now. Um, it kind of the the, fu the the sweet casings cakes the inside of your mouth very badly, and it's not very pleasant at all, to be honest. Um, this did that after about 20 minutes. Um, <clears throat> it might have been because I'd had slightly stronger tobaccos before this, but it didn't taste a great deal in it. Just a nice sweet kind of generic tobacco flavour, really. I know quite a few people got on quite well with this, but I found it a little bit. Just sweet and bland, not really a lot going off in there. But um, it smoked ever so well in this pipe. Um, but yeah, it's curly cut deluxe. It's not my kind of tobacco, to be honest. Um, if you're into things like the Larson's Blend 32, it might be a it might be a good alternative for you. Um, I mean, the bits of slice twisted, very very tiny, to the kind of things you find in the three numbers that side, that kind of thickness. So that was that was an interesting smoke. Not. I don't want to criticise it, it's not my kind of tobacco, so it's not really my place to, to say it's horrible or anything like that, but not a great smoke, not a bad smoke, so so. Come see, come see. Um, then up next, I had to try this, um, I've, I've got myself a tin, it's sat in one of these pigeonholes at the side of me maturing nice, uh, sat, it's just sat there waiting for a rainy day to be honest. So. Um, Seeing as I bought it along and it was part of the prize, we had to have some of the Peterson's Christmas blend, or what do they call it, the 2011 holiday season. Now, I, I didn't really take many aromatic pipes, I didn't want to hit the BC again, so uh, I carry this round in my bag, this is my emergency pipe, this is the Falcon, I've showed it to you before with the funky bowl on it. Um, now, it's a big wide aperture, burns aromatics beautifully, this pipe does. So, I tried the Peterson, and I must admit, I wasn't very impressed. Again, I've smoked a lot of things before, my taste buds were pretty much done by this point. Um, let's have a look. It was sweet and nutty, um, not very Christmassy, in my opinion. Um, I say, it's a typical Peterson sweet aromatic. Then in the second half, I had to double check that I hadn't put some nutty cut <laughs> in these bags instead. It, it just reminded me so much of Nutty Cut in the latter half. Um, from what I gather from over here in Ian talking last night, Peterson's Nutty Cut originally was a Christmas tobacco. Um, <coughs> so I don't think they've changed the recipe too much, to be honest. It reminded me so much of Nutty Cut in the latter half. Um, like sweet nuts like macadamia and hints of coconut and things like that. But it, to me, the Christmas blend is just a lot like the, um, the Nutty Cut. It wasn't too wasn't too impressed with it to be honest but again I'm going off aromatics so everybody else who tried it loved the stuff excuse me um, aromatic smokers with us thought it was gorgeous I personally was not that impressed um, you know but hey what are you gonna do so um so yeah I mean that took through what I actually did smoke last night I've still got some of the other other pipe club tobaccos that I need to get my work my way through and a load of other stuff as well um, I didn't try Rolfton's Negro, um, sorry, Tribal and Terrier's uh, Negro head that Rolfton sent me. A couple of other guys did at the pipe club and they raved about it. So um, I was hoping to try some this morning, but my mouth is just a charred desert remains of what it used to be. I think any of the taste buds on there are going to work. It feels a little bit like sandpaper against the roof of my mouth. It's <coughs> the joys of pipe club. I'll have no taste buds for the next two days, but hey, it's only once a month. Um, as well as that, we had a, uh, a couple of snuffs last night. Um, I'm still peddling this 
this one around, pox, cheese and bacon. Um, that had a good response from the guys at the pipe club. When I get people to try it in the shop, people who just take snuff, um, they see it as a nice novelty, but nobody really really wants to go for it. But last night at the pipe club, everybody who tried it all of the stuff. And I'm going to do a proper write-up of this as well. Uh, there'll be write-ups of all these to follow later, to be honest. Is the top chocolate stuff. Again, I've been carrying this round for a couple of months. Um, this stuff's gorgeous. When you smell it out of the tin, it's kind of... It's still got a kind of spicy tobacco note to it. And a subtle hint of like cocoa drinking powder. As if somebody's just took some best SP and mixed in some Capri's like drinking chocolate with it. When you take it, you get almost kind of a citrusy, slightly spicy SP style flavour from the tobacco. And then bam, somebody's just shoved a load of hot chocolate up your nose. It's a great snuff. Doesn't last very long. Very, very short lived. Um, tox chocolate snuff. That's extremely nice. It smells, like I say, like hot chocolate, things like that, cacao and stuff. It's it's a beautiful snuff. Um, I am going to be reviewing a few more. I've got a tin of peanut butter downstairs, so I may do a review of the peanut butter later, if not tomorrow. Um, so that pretty much rounds up last night at the Pipe Club. Big thanks to everybody who came. AD was uh, doing a bit of videoing last night, so hopefully AD you can have a video up later. Um, can't wait to watch that. Still need to watch your uh, your box opening, the Devil one. Bill was telling me about it last night. So I'm going to watch that after I've seen this. And um, Rolfden, ever so glad that you got your tobaccos, matey. Um, you're pretty good at spotting accents. Birmingham's kind of the West Midlands, I'm kind of the East Midlands. And when you consider that England isn't very wide, uh, it's probably, what, 50 miles, if that, between us and Birmingham. So well spotted there, matey. I am very, very close to Birmingham. They're more West Midlands and more East Midlands, but still, they're the, the closest big city to us, sort of thing. Um, so yeah, um, I hope you enjoy the tobaccos, matey. To say the Syrian Latakia, I know you enjoyed that. That was an absolutely amazing Latakia tobacco. Um, like I say, let me know what you think to them. Um, my black triple X Negro head is completely different to the um, tribal, the tribal Terrier version. So um, I'll be intrigued to hear what you say to that. I know a couple of the guys who I sent it to in the States. I sent some to um, some Night Dog Bob. He wasn't that impressed. He then passed it on to somebody else. I can't remember who that was now. I should always look these things up before I start talking. But um, but no, it's it's a very very acquired taste. Most people tend to chew the thinner version as pig, uh, black pigtail. But no, and let me uh, let me know what you think to those tobaccos, matey. And again, big thanks to all of you who came along to the pipe club and entered the Christmas raffle. Um, I hope Bill enjoys the pipe and the tobaccos. So, like I say, all of you, I'll see you all at the uh, January Pipe Club, first one for 2012. We're meeting on Monday the 9th of January at the Lincolnshire Poacher on Mansfield Road. We meet at 7pm. Uh, I do have some of the sample tobaccos in now, actually, uh, for that one. We've got some thick brown twist sweet black cherry, and we've got some sweet pigtail, brown pigtail as well. So we've got some more twists coming up at next month's uh, Pipe Club. So it should be a good night. So um, I look forward to seeing you all there. Thanks very much for watching. It's a long video again, I know, but hey, I've got a lot of things I want to try and get through. So yeah, take care boys and girls. I'll see you all very, very soon. This time of year I'm busy, so there will be more videos to come, but I can't guarantee when. Um, there will be more before Christmas, but if I don't get a chance to do any more before Christmas, Merry Christmas, folks, and I'll catch up with you all soon. Take care. Goodbye.